We're now going to look at the various components of aggregate demand. Aggregate demand in the economy consists of consumption expenditure plus investment spending plus government spending plus net exports. These are simply exports minus imports. We subtract imports because they represent demand or spending on foreign goods. We're going to start by looking at the largest component typically in most economies of aggregate demand, which is consumption expenditure. Then we'll look at the other components in turn. So for now, ignore the rest of the slide, we will come back to that later. Let's have a look at consumption first. You may recall that a consumption function looks something like this. Consumption has an autonomous component, C bar, plus an induced component, little c y. So what does this mean in English? Autonomous consumption, or independent consumption, is that level of consumption that occurs when income is zero. So if you imagine that this term doesn't exist, income is zero, autonomous consumption is that part of consumption that will still occur. So for instance, if somebody has a zero income, they may need to beg or borrow in order to have sufficient food and clothing necessary to survive. So autonomous consumption independent of the level of income. The induced component over here, little cy, shows you how consumption varies as income varies. We can see it's a positive relationship showing that consumption rises as income rises. And the nature of that relationship is given by little c. That's the slope of the consumption function. It's called the marginal propensity to consume, or the tendency to consume out of income. So to take an example, say if little c is 0 0.8, the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.8, it means that if income were to rise by, say, 1 rand, consumption would rise by 80 cents, or 0 0.8 of that 1 rand. You might ask yourself, well, what happens to the other 0 0.2 of that additional rand, or 20 cents? Well, it will be saved. So the 0 0.2 would be the, the marginal propensity to save. This diagram is taken from your first year textbook, Parkin, and it shows you a consumption function plotted. Got consumption on the vertical axis, income on the horizontal. So it's upward sloping, showing you that consumption rises as income rises. It's not a one is to one relationship. That would be given by your 45 degree line. It would show you all points at which consumption is exactly equal to your income. This line is flatter than the 45 degree line showing you that as income rises by, say, one rand, don't spend that entire one rand on consumption expenditure. Some of it will be saved. Over here we've got the vertical intercept that's represented by C bar or autonomous consumption. So even if income were to be zero, this is the amount of consumption that would still take place. The slope in this instance is 0 0.75, the marginal propensity to consume. So consumption rises as income rises, but it's not a one is to one relationship. Here's an example of a consumption function. In this instance, your autonomous component is equal to 100. That would be your vertical intercept if you plotted it. And little c would be given by 0 0.8. So the marginal propensity consume is the change in consumption, 80 cents, as income changes by, say, 1 rand. Here's another example that you can try. If income were to rise from 10,000 to 12,000 rand, and you were told that consumption increased from 8 to 9,600 rand, what would be little c, or the marginal propensity consume? So you could work out the change in C over the change in Y, and you would get 0 0.8. By deduction, you could work out that the marginal propensity to save must therefore be equal to 0 0.2.
So the two together must sum to one. We'll have a greater look at saving in the next video. We'll also have a look at the next component of, invest of, of aggregate demand, which is investment.